it's Noah. Welcome back to iHollywood TV. Well, you know our next guest from playing Xander in the hit daytime series Days of Our Lives, airing weekdays on Peacock. Please welcome Paul Telfer to the show. Hello, Paul. You're coming to us from Zoom. Hey, Noah. Nice to see you. Nice to see you, everybody. Paul, so nice to meet you virtually once again. Thank you for coming on the show. So let's go ahead and get started. So first off, you know, I would like to say that so many, they have fallen in love with you on Days of Our Lives. They really like you a lot on that show. Um, but, you know, what attracted you to want to join the soap opera series, which I believe you joined back in 2015? That's correct, yeah. Well, I'd had a little bit of a journey getting to Days of Our Lives only because my first, you know, I'm, I'm a British actor and my first yeah. couple of American jobs were NBC Universal jobs. One was a, a remake of, it was like a Spartacus miniseries that the USA mm -hmm. Network did. And then I did um, a Hercules miniseries where I played Hercules and that was on NBC, you know, uh, primetime. And off the back of that, I met with a bunch of different NBC people, including the, the nice people that run Days of Our Lives. And back then I was very arrogant and very self-impressed. And I thought maybe I, you know, I, I was gonna go off and be a big movie star. Um, so I wasn't so interested in doing a soap opera, but also I wasn't sure I could do it. It's really, really, really hard work. It's an enormous mm -hmm. amount of dialogue to learn. They move very, very fast. Mm -hmm. And I just mm -hmm. didn't know or wasn't sure, at least back then, if I had the chops to actually be able to do yeah, it. it. So I think I hid some of that um, trepidation underneath arrogance. And it was only years later when my lovely wife, Carmen, was um, she's an actress as well. And she was doing a play in California. And we were both here and I was like, well, wouldn't it be nice to both be working at the same time for once and to mm -hmm. both be in the, the same place? And uh, Days of Our Lives had offered me, um, like, a, it was a, a small role, not a contract role, but just to come and like test the water kind of thing. And I loved mm -hmm. it. Like, there were such nice people and it turned out I could do it. And I did have a little bit of a facility for learning things fast and acting them out fast. And um, yeah, so since then, I mean, when you say 2015, that seems like a couple of minutes ago, but then you look at it on the calendar yeah. and all of a sudden that's like eight, nine years, you know. <laughs> it's been a little while. Yeah. <laughs> now, being an actor on a daytime soap opera show, does it give you actually, you know, some freedom to work on other projects or is taping episodes, you know, of Days of Our Lives a main priority for an actor that is part of a soap opera series? Oh, absolutely. I mean, beyond just the, the schedule making it tricky to do other work, um, mm -hmm. You know, sometimes there are, con there are things in the contracts, like there's specific kinds of work certainly we couldn't do, unless you're very lucky and you have a bit of a of a, a pre-existing career prior to, you know, to getting on a show like Days. You're probably not going to be allowed to do another soap opera while you're doing your soap opera, although there are a couple of actors on our show that, that pull that off. Um, but mostly it's, um, it's the scheduling. It's very hard um, to predict when and you know, how often you're going to be working on a given week because, mm -hmm. you know, it's a very fluid situation. Um, you know, the writers are constantly generating new material. Well, we only have a couple of episodes for Paul this week, but the following week, maybe he'll be in every day. We're just not sure yet. So it does make it hard to do other things. But I will say the compensation yeah. and the thing that's so fun about a job like Days. And I was thinking about this yesterday. I, I was watching um, a music documentary about, like, you know, indie pop in the the 90s and karen O, oh, the lead singer of the yeah yeah yes um it was like document the part of the documentary was like focusing on her she had kind of a bit of a breakdown when she was on tour and it was because mm. of the repetition just doing the same thing over and over and yeah. over again and that was something i'd always the feared about doing theater and certain types of acting work we just kind of like get stuck in a rut stuck in, mm. stuck in a rut and i just feel really fortunate um because with days and specifically with xander the character's gone through so many changes. The show has gone through so many changes while I've been there. And we're always doing something new. So even mm -hmm. though it's the same job, it feels like a, you know, there's just this constant fresh material coming through the whole time. And even if the scenarios are a little bit similar, we're always doing things differently. And it just, it just makes it very easy to feel satisfied, if you know what I mean. Like, I, I would obviously, we would, you know, actors would love to be working all the time and love to be you know, hopping from project to project if possible. But if you're gonna be on a single show, it's pretty great to be in something as diverse and crazy. I mean, you know, it's a really wild show where all kinds of strange things can happen. So you never really feel as stuck, at least in my opinion, in my experience. Mm -hmm. And it's great, too, that they change it up so it, it doesn't feel like it's the same thing constantly over and over. Because, you know, if you do a talk show, 
I, I, <laughs> you, you do the same thing. Oh, like I sit in this chair every day and talk to people. Think of all the you know, looking so, at these faces. Yeah, <laughs> looking at all the great new faces, and also to my teleprompter, I'm constantly right. looking at the 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 camera and you know it, it's nice to do something a little different each and every day Absolutely. but i love what i do but that's great and you know you've been in at least 533 episodes what wow. of days of our lives since 2015 um has there been a best part or moment for you that you have really enjoyed from the time of you being on you know this specific show oh there's been oh, they really i mean it's almost like say when it's 530 plus and you gotta understand yeah. the stuff that's aired is now six seven months old so i've probably done another 50 60 70 episodes since then who knows right. um but the things that really stand out over the years is it's just it's being part of a troop of actors you know i, I um i did theater when i was younger um but since my professional career started i've never really had the opportunity to do a real theater job since I started working in television and film. I mean, I could have, but, but really it just it didn't, they never really made sense at the time that they were offered. And mm -hmm. what's beautiful about Days is that it splits the, the line, well, I guess any soap opera, but Days is my only experience. Um, it really splits the line between television and movies and theater because we shoot it almost like a live play. It's very similar to- right. Like even the way our scripts are structured and are kind of a legacy of when soap operas were uh, were live entertainment, like filmed live and broadcast live on television. So they still have a lot of those same moves and the same kind, kind kinds of sequences. Um, so it has that feeling of like being live. Plus, we shoot very fast and very quick. Usually, you know, one maybe two takes if there's a mistake. But if you do it correctly, it's it's going on TV. So. Mm. It gives you, just like a theatre actor has, it gives you an enormous amount of control in the moment over your character. You, you're, you are kind of like, you know, the, the writer is the author, obviously, but the voice of the character is the actor. And on a show like ours, because they're not micromanaging every little aspect of your performance, mm -hmm. and especially after a few years, they come to trust you to interpret things, that, you know, your way. Not just um, the dialogue, but the emotions and just the, the intentions of, of the character. And I don't know, there's something to that, to like having that level of um, control over how the character is perceived, because they're not going to come in afterwards. Oh, Paul, do it differently. We really <laughs> want you to be more ang angry this time. And, and it's funny because, you know, I started my career and most of my career was doing more traditional primetime movie style shoots where they do right. come in and, and micromanage and as they should. You know, that's that's the whole idea. And I love mm -hmm. that, too. But now, you know, Xander is, to an extent, Xander is me and I am Xander. I would hate to have anybody else play him at this point because I really do feel like there's a job of work that's been done over these seven, eight, nine years to take him from a villain to kind of a goodie to kind of a baddie. You don't know what he is, but at least he feels like a person. Like there, there, are, there are qualities to Xander that go beyond just what's written, written on the page. Yeah. And that can only come from like this, this melding of the, the two things which can be done on soap opera. You know, Paul, that's very interesting that you say that because I agree, you know, when someone watches a soap opera series for a long period of time and, you know, a character is there for a long period of time, or at least the actor is playing the character for many years, and then they end up switching out the actor when they decide to leave the show with someone else that plays this specific character, it never looks the same. It looks very <laughs> odd to have someone else play it because you're like... Well, I thought that was the Xander. Now, who is this <laughs> Xander? You know, why so, is he blonde now? Or yeah, yeah. what happened to his accent? Yeah. Why is Ryan Gosling uh, playing Xander, which was uh, played by Paul? Really, you know. <laughs> okay, you know? <laughs> um, now, I now I want to ask you this because being on a soap opera series, I think a lot of actors or actresses they don't have a whole lot of time off, depending on shoot days. Um, tell me, how many uh, episodes do you guys film within a day's worth of time? Oh, well, it's, I mean, again, that's one of those things that's kind of changed over the years as we've gotten faster and uh, more efficient, I'll say, yeah. um, during my tenure. It used to be, they, they tell me back in the, the glory days of soap opera, they would just do one episode a day. They would come right. in, do a big table read, um, do rehearsals all the way almost to lunch, and then just shoot the show until it was done. It doesn't matter if it was midnight or 1 a.m. Well, that has never been my experience. We we move as fast as we can and get as much done as we can. And it's as close to, I mean, I always joke about it being the soap factory. Oh, 
I'm off down to the soap factory again, darling, you know, um, <laughs> but it, it, it is in the best way. It's just efficient. They've like really just worked out the, the fastest possible way to generate um, and serve this material. And so on a given day, well, okay, so we shoot Monday to Friday and I believe our current average is about nine episodes a week. So that's not quite two episodes a day, but more or less. And especially now, and especially since COVID, COVID caused us to, you know, the, the show, you know, um, was incredibly successful with uh, surviving COVID and mm. uh, manage, managing it both amongst the cast and the crew and the production schedule. Um, but one of the things that did do is cause some really um, crazy hijinks with the schedule where an actor would not be available for anything from a few days to a month, depending on their uh, uh, current health uh, or, or even the, uh, on the production side, there'd be key members right. of production that would have to step out for X amount of time. And that cascades through the whole schedule. You can't just mm -hmm. pull one character out and stick another one in. The story has mm -hmm. to make sense. So you just pause and, and wait as an actor, you know, for a few weeks or a month for your uh, scene partner to come back. But in the meantime, you'd be doing all these other storylines from maybe a month ago or two weeks hence. And mm -hmm. so for us, it was a real um, bit of a, a plate juggling, like mentally, if you can imagine, with all, all the different stories. Like, wait, so d do I know that I'm... You know, do, do I know that I killed this person or kidnapped that person yet? Do they know? Like just keeping track of all the, the threads. Um, but, right. you know, it's not that hard at the end of the day. Like, um, it, you know, and it's good, honestly, in a, in a way to force, for me at least, to, to concentrate and really try and place where things are happening in a, in a narrative instead of just showing mm -hmm. up every day and saying the words, you know? Now, you guys tape episodes ahead, right? So you guys oh, tape yeah. ahead really we're in advance. Most, we're the furthest ahead of the soaps, I believe, yeah. <laughs> Oh my goodness. So have you guys already taped your Halloween and Christmas episodes? Oh yes. Um we're I mean we're into we're past Valentine on our show. That's, That's Valentine's part, part Day so already. Right? It's I mean it's it's really kind of um you know, we get Christmas in July, just like just like you should. <laughs> um it was really funny uh, a couple of years ago. Um Peacock, when we were first transitioning over to Peacock, they wanted to do some specials like exclusives. Um, right. one was called, it was like Beyond Salem 1 and 2, but they also did a Christmas special. And I was so excited to be a part of it because that's a big thing on British TV is um, right. all the big shows will do Christmas specials, the comedy shows. I love even a the Christmas drama. special. It's fantastic. And I feel like yes. it's not as much of a thing over here. Like you'll do, you'll have like Christmas extravaganza shows, but not right. like, a, like Law and Order won't do like a special, like two hour Christmas movie where they're like, you know, mm. whereas like that's a very British thing to do. And so to be part of like days as they were doing this Christmas special, it was kind of a, a fantasy episode, was really fun. But it also meant that that year I got like three Christmases because I got the the show Christmas, then the spin off show Christmas, and then Christmas. So it was it was really good. <laughs> three Christmases in one year. Oh my goodness! The Christmas <laughs> fanatic people would have loved that, Paul. They would have been like, I, mean, I do enjoy Christmas. I want this to be me. Now I'm sure you probably can't say, but uh. You guys have filmed the Halloween episode. I mean, you know, you guys are already past Valentine's now for next year. Uh, can you say who you who you're gonna be? Who Paul's gonna be, or who Xander's gonna be? Who Xander's gonna be, or is Xander even dressing up in this episode? Yeah, now? I'm trying to. I don't think. I think I was knee deep in some um, shenanigans there that precluded me from actually dressing up. I'm trying. I'm trying to remember the actual. You know, uh -huh. it's it's still a ways away for us to air and now it's a ways away from when i did it so it becomes hard to remember right. but xander this but paul this year carmen and I, my wife and i have been um trying to build up the courage to try and do a really good job of um of, of uh, gomez and morticia from the adams family I've always oh. wanted to do that um yeah. so maybe this year is the year because we're going to have a little halloween party at the house so uh because my birthday oh, is the day before halloween so i love halloween halloween's yeah. my absolute favorite you are an October 30th baby. That's right, baby. Oh, my goodness. So you get to have candy and cake and all the fun stuff the day before Halloween on Halloween Eve. And then on Halloween Day, you get to do it all over again. Yeah. Well, it's great. So I get to up. basically invade any Halloween party and turn it into my birthday party. So That's right. Oh, my goodness. You know, I was born on Cinco de Mayo. Granted, I don't do any drinking or anything like that for Cinco de Mayo. People well, everybody like, else is I'm like, no. <laughs> 
<laughs> yes, people are celebrating for me. I'm like, that's right. Go ahead and have a shot for me. You know, I won't do it, but you can do it for me. Uh, anyway, <laughs> now, Paul, how is it like to play Xander? And what is something, you know, that you like the most about your character? Oh, I mean, I, I've, I've said it before, but I do feel so. I don't think I would be on Days. And I don't think I would be in the genre if it wasn't yeah. for the particular kind of character that they gave me. Um, Xander is a lot of fun to play because... Although he started as a villain, he's kind of ended up in this area that I like to call, um, you know, you have anti-heroes, you know, and in, in, yes. in, he's more like an anti-villain in the sense that mm -hmm. all of his urges and his responses and his reactions, his like core way of dealing with the world is kind of criminal and he has like a villainous mindset, but... <laughs> really all he wants is to be loved and to be secure and to be in the bosom of his family and to have a, a lovely yeah. wife and kids and to just be a respected member of the community and because of his inherent nature the way he tries to achieve those things causes a lot of problems because he's usually doing something criminal or he's sneaking or cheating to mm -hmm. do to, to get what he wants he can't just do the actual boring work of being a good person <laughs> and so for me as as you know a human being who's trying to be good in the world. Um, you know, we all have our uh, negative aspects of ourselves. We all have our, um, you know, bad urges or, or whatever. And so to yeah. be able to play a character where you don't have to necessarily repress all of that, and I can just, you know, ex exorcise it through, through the character. And then, mm -hmm. you know, what's really fun about our show, and I laugh about it all the time, is how forgiving all the other characters on the show are you know like they'll be very angry that you shot their mother or put them in a cage or tried to cook them alive or they'll be very angry but I give it like two three weeks maybe a month and like ah oh, bygones are bygones they'll forget about it you know they're like yeah, let's get married okay. like, <laughs> yeah that's right you know <laughs> it takes now, the Paul, pressure off yeah now Paul what can the viewers expect from your character in upcoming new episodes airing this fall on Peacock what can we expect? well this I'm you know I'm really excited about everything that's coming down the pipe and in a way that yeah. I haven't been in a long time in a long time just because it's the kind of the culmination of a lot of things being set up for for like long-term viewers or certainly mm -hmm. long-term viewers um that like Xander will know that he's had this um thwarted love affair with um the beautiful and uh wise and successful dr sarah horton that he's never That's really been right. worthy of yeah exactly and he's he's never considered himself her equal or i mean he, he loves her so much but it, it never quite works out for them because his inherent insecurity always brings causes him to do something stupid to, to ruin it all but now the audience is ahead of xander the audience knows that Sarah is actually carrying Xander's child and and, and actually at this oh. point in the show has, give, has given birth to Xander's child. And Xander is slowly becoming the only person, not just in Salem, but in the known universe to not know that he's the father of this kid. And mm -hmm. so off the back of um, the very recent um, collapse of his uh, engagement to this other girl that he's head over heels in love with, Chloe Lane, played by the beautiful Nadia Bjorlin, um, when that starts to collapse, because of some of the, I don't want to say exactly how it happens, but because of some yeah. of the, the things that I've mentioned, this is also in the aftermath of him losing his uncle Victor, who's essentially a father figure to him, a very toxic father figure. And so mm -hmm. there's just an enormous amount to play out, both like drama-wise and romance-wise mm -hmm. of, you know, Xander dealing with being crushed and losing his, you know, fiance to this information, losing his uncle slash, you know, father who he has such a complicated relationship with, but also finding out that what he's always wanted has happened. He is a father. And mm -hmm. so as all of that plays out and as he and Sarah try to come to, ter come to terms with each other and what how it's going to work being parents that don't live together and don't love each other anymore, um, there's just a huge amount of work in there that I'm so proud of. Um, yeah. I, you know, I'm particularly getting um, my amazing scene partner, Lindsay Godfrey, back again on a consistent basis, who plays mm -hmm. Sarah, who's just a magnificent, um, super, super duper actress. And so the scenes that we got to play, it's, it's as if we've been working up to and building up to playing these scenes for years. Mm -hmm. And it was a real 
you know, a huge emotional release to, to do them. Yeah. So, yeah, I really want people to, you know, if they, if they like soap operas, even if they don't watch Days, um, <laughs> they like soap operas in general, you've got some really good soapy, you know, messy, you know, tasty oh, stuff yes. in your way. This is going to be Xander's season this fall and <laughs> mm-hmm, Days of Our Lives. By the way, I must ask this. I'm sure a lot of people wonder this, and I'm going to ask it to you, Paul. When you do a soap opera show, how much kissing do you have to do? How do you get comfortable with that? You know, you see in each scene, kiss, kiss, kiss. How is that like, Paul? I will say, you know, I've done a number of, I I had performed a bunch of romantic scenes prior to getting on dates, but to our earlier talking point, um, we move so fast, right? So Mm -hmm. you don't necessarily, you wouldn't necessarily have the time to become comfortable with your scene partner unless you made that time. And so mm. that's certainly what I've always tried to do. My main concern is that my scene partner, be they female or male, because as, as Xander, I, I, you know, I've had to kiss men on the show as well when he's trying, trying to like sneak or, or scam some money out of people. And you know, this poor character, Leo, uh, who's uh, like a naughty, ch- cheeky hustler journalist on the show, um, he and Xander have had their ups and downs over the years. And all you yeah. can really do with your scene partner, whether they, um, whether you get a lot of time with them or not, is just try and make them feel safe. Um, mm. Make sure that you're you're clear about any uh, boundaries that you may or may not have, um, and just to, you know, <laughs> the, the, it's such a cliche to talk about how it, you know, romance scenes aren't romantic because you've right. got like you know the whole crew there and there's a. A guy eating a sandwich, like like and while so many watching people you watching stuff. you behind the scenes, yeah. thinking they better not screw this up. This better, yeah, exactly. And exactly. when you have to do it more than one time, oh, Paul. You know, you hope that you're. I mean, sometimes there'll be an issue, you know, like a boom shadow, or the camera makes the wrong move, and you have to reset and do it. But right. usually, you're just trying not to giggle. I mean, not to be funny, but like. You know, Nadia, Lindsay, um, Emily, Emily, who plays Gwen, these are some of my best friends in the world. And certainly like the, some of the people that I've, uh, as an actor, worked with the closest in my career. Right. So yeah. it's, you know, it's not quite like kissing your, your best friend or kissing your sister, but mm-hmm. there is this element of like, <laughs> here we go again kind of thing. And it's often funny because, you know, we, we do do a quick rehearsal before the takes. And so you right. don't kiss in rehearsal, you just kind of like hover near each other and um like so Lindsay will always like make a little like like cartoon like, uh-huh. nah, 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 like noise when we go together uh-huh. it's Jared because it, it just breaks the tension of like there being right. any actual weirdness here um but yeah. look you know it, it is it is a crazy part of the job like that and and the constant the, for my character at least the, the near constant shirtlessness um yeah. oh, are an ongoing yes. you know like uh you're, it's, you it's one of the things that just make me wrong Yes. Yeah. And relaxed as well. The main thing is, like I say, safety and relaxation. And one of the cool things recently at Days is they brought in an intimacy yeah. coordinator just to guarantee that everybody feels safe and and respected and listened to uh-huh. in those scenes. Because very often when you're rushing, that's yeah. when people's feelings are overlooked. And that, 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 that can't happen right now. So that's great. Now, Paul, how did you feel the first time when, you know, you joined the show and it came about that you had to have your first kiss scene and your first shirtless scene? Were, <laughs> were you nervous inside? Well, it, to me, it was, it was, uh, it comes with the territory, right? You're going to do a soap yeah. opera, you might be doing some kissing and you might have your shirt off when it's happening. <laughs> um, so, you know, like, I, I, you know, most of my jobs, whether it's NCIS or Hercules or, um, uh-huh. The, uh, uh, <laughs> uh, once upon a time or any of these shows very often all you know there's there's a scene where my character has his shirt off so you know uh-huh. i've always tried to um you know stay in shape and to right. be able to feel relaxed and comfortable in these things but still i, I do remember like I, I can really see myself now when i see the old old episodes that i did when i have my shirt off yeah. I, I'm, I'm very like posture <laughs> you know uh aware like you know i'm, I'm uh-huh. like that's just trying to hold myself. I'm being very aware of where the lights are and just trying to, and and then like you see like six, seven, eight years later, I'm just like, you know, relaxed and my tummy's More just natural, whatever you know? Yeah. And to be right. honest, it was really, it was really good for me because seeing those later ones, I'm actually more comfortable in those and the, the looking better from a, 
you know, a body fat perspective or like an aesthetics perspective versus just mm -hmm. seeing somebody who's comfortable in their own skin on screen. It was actually really instructive for me to see that like the latter is actually better. And so not to worry so much about all that stuff. So. I am still thinking back. I was listening to that. I'm still thinking back. I cannot believe that you guys are already past Valentine's Day filming. It's wild. Yeah. I'm like, what? I I'll just give you these roses right here for <laughs> the Valentine's. No, I'm kidding. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's crazy. I mean, I, we got like, oh my god, we had a little bit of a practice with it just because, um, yeah. you know, over the year, like when I first came on the show, I think there were a couple of months, maybe three yeah. months ahead of production, and we've only gotten faster over the years. But then another thing happened, like midway through my tenure there, they mm -hmm. um they did the whole show jumped. It was part of the storyline. The whole show jumped forward a year. Right. There was yeah. like somebody went into a coma and when they woke up, they were like, what, what year is it? And, you know, it was a whole year later. And then we had to fill in what had happened over that year with these uh -huh. flashbacks explaining all the new strange things that were happening around. And it was just very confusing for the cast, as you can imagine. Mm -hmm. Like you, you had to keep track of what your story had been, what this new futuristic story that you're now in seemed to be, and then wait for the flashbacks to fill in the in between. It was just very, very confusing. Um, but, you know, we got it done. And some, you, you know, there's just no way around that. That's going to be confusing for everybody. Um, so now things like just jumping ahead to do Valentine's, that's easy because, you know, yeah. at least you have a concept of what Valentine's Day is and how to play it. And, okay, these are extra romantic scenes or like the April Fool scenes are extra silly or the Halloween scenes are extra spooky. You just turn the yeah. dial up a little bit on those. So it's not so hard to keep track of, but... But yeah, like living in two um, time zones or whatever, or like calendar zones, I guess is more what it is, um, mm. throughout the year is, is a bit tricky. And I do notice it only because, um, you know, it's like our seasons are switched. You know, it's almost uh. like Salem is in Australia or something. It's in the Southern Hemisphere. Right. Because, right. you know, in the winter, you know, the shirtless scenes that we have, everybody's really tan because it's actually summer when we shot it and then vice versa when we get to the summer <laughs> scenes we're all a bit pale and pasty because it's like in the middle of uh winter, yeah. oh my goodness well it has been such a pleasure to get to have you on the show paul be sure to catch paul telfer in days of our lives airing weekdays on peacock thank you so much for coming on the show we have to have you back on again real soon it was such a delightful conversation it's lovely talking to you too no yeah come back anytime <laughs>